So we're we're now on a zone where you, Osama bin Laden and Mullah Omar, the leader of Taliban, used to uh, stay here. So it was the base for them during the Taliban regime. They were staying right here. Yeah, those walls you see, like inside those compounds. It's crazy. He was like right there. Yeah, he used to control the 95 percent of Afghanistan from here. This is called the Sarai Jama or the Red Mosque. This is a place where uh, the leader of Taliban, he used to come here often and pray at this area. Makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but <laughs> still cool to see, see all these sights. Kandahar is the former capital of Afghanistan and is located in the southern part of the country. The city rose to prominence when Osama bin Laden and Mohammed Omar set up their base here in the 1990s to start the Taliban, a Sunni Islamic fundamentalist political movement and military organization. That's basically a fancy way to say a very scary terrorist organization who are currently controlling over 50% of all the land in Afghanistan. Over the last 25 years, Kandahar has been home to a lot of attacks and destruction and it just became safe enough to visit last year. I repeat, it just became safe enough to visit last year. I was nervous as hell to come here because any situation with the Taliban is game over for me. Getting kidnapped is my biggest fear and that's exactly what could happen. But I was so curious to see what Kandahar was like because I know that there is another side to the story among its one million residents. So off I went into the unknown for probably the most daring travel adventure of my life. All right, we are now pulling up at the airport, heading to Kandahar in the south of Afghanistan. Khodafiz, 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 bye bye. Long lines. Alright, let's go to Kandahar. Uh, we're at Kandahar Airport. We have made it to Kandahar, yeah. Afghanistan. I truthfully never thought I would make it here. The city's been off limits for almost decades. Yeah. But we're here and uh, really excited to see what's going on. This is a crazy like fortification system. Everywhere is like super secure. Yeah. Right? Super secure, these like huge walls, crazy military checkpoints just to leave the airport. But despite all of these tense feelings, it didn't take me long to realize that there is certainly another side of the Kandahar story, and frankly speaking, it's beautiful. Salam alaikum and welcome to Kandahar, aka the pomegranate city of Afghanistan. I got extremely lucky to visit Kandahar right at the peak of pomegranate season, and in case you didn't already know, Afghanistan has some of the world's finest fruits. Alright, so we're just rolling up now to a pomegranate farm out here in Kandahar. This is all filled with pomegranates. Well, for some reason, the weather in Kandahar is kind of perfect for for pomegranates and uh, since I was very young I was hearing always about pomegranates of Kandahar even there are very famous songs really yeah like uh, they say that they're like the best pomegranates in Kandahar mm -hmm. and so all the pomegranates in Kabul come from here yeah exactly all the pomegranates in Kabul they're from Kandahar you can imagine like probably like two days ago did they did the packs you saw they were yeah. packed only two days ago so. guys literally like straddling the entire tree just to pick these pomegranates. In the US, like pomegranates are a huge thing and everybody wants to have them and drink the juice, but we don't we don't produce them. Yeah. So it's really cool to come to Afghanistan and see yeah. the whole production aspect. Yeah. All I'm witnessing in these pomegranate fields are pure happiness from the locals. I mean, wouldn't you be happy too? <laughs> He just ate that entire pomegranate in like 20 seconds. <laughs> Ask him how many pomegranates he eats in one day. 10 to 20 pomegranates in one day. In one day. Yeah. Let's give them to you. Get this fresh pomegranate. Like, looks so good. So these kids just hang out in the pomegranate fields and they just eat pomegranates all day. Literally, literally they have pomegranate stains all over their mouths. And they're so cute. They're following us around now. My name is Drew. What's your name? My name is Bilal Ahmad. 
Bill Ahmad. Oh, yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You like Afghanistan? Yes. yes. How about you? Yes. Dilla tan kaitan me bare arch me kani ba. People in Kandahar automatically they just like pomegranates and they just cultivate pomegranates everywhere. Yes, mazameta. Mmm. For real, this is the best pomegranate I've ever had. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's like straight from the source. Look how fresh it is. Yeah. Mm. But this is wild. Like literally, I'm in a pomegranate bye, field bye, in bye. Afghanistan. Dude, this is so cool. So we're on our way out and what just happened? Yeah, these, these guys just wanted to give us some, some pomegranates. So he, Look at these. Yeah, he thinks that we're guests here and then uh, it's, it's not good to get out of this garden without any pomegranates. So what else is happening in Kandahar besides pomegranates? It's time to explore the city. Hey Drew, welcome to Afghanistan. Thank you bro. Thank you. Tashakul, Allah. Tashakul. Bye bye. Bye. So we are taking a tuk-tuk ride because that's the thing to do here in Kandahar. Salam alaikum. Whoa, fancy, fancy. Alright. <laughs> Have you ever ridden one of these in Kandahar? No. First time. Never. First time. First time for Noor. That makes me happy if it's his yeah. first time. Yeah, sure. It's always great to get in a, some kind of public transportation when you arrive somewhere. Just to kind of scope out the city and... Noor, do you think there's any other tourists here? Uh, I'm sure there is no. No like one. 100%. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Probably there are some NGO workers, but they're not tourists. It's really special to be here to see a city that the world re really doesn't know about. Yeah. Our first stop, the market. We're now walking through the many bazaars here. The oldest bazaar in Kandahar, right in front of us. This place feels extremely old, like a time machine. Yes. Like. Wow, I can't even get the words out of my mouth. Yeah. I simply cannot visit any city without seeing the market because that's how I can wrap my head around its culture and the overall society. But this one here is pretty special. Noor, I've been a lot of places in Afghanistan and this is probably my favorite. Oh yeah? Yeah, I, I just like think the, the life here in this market is, is insane. I'm happy to hear that. It's just sure. so cool, like everything's made of mud bricks yeah. and you feel like it's so old but nothing in here has become modernized, yeah. nothing. It's like super... Yeah. Authentic and look at that's, these shops. That's one of the best thing about Kandahar actually. It's so cool yeah. man. And the women have different color uh, Chattery. Chattery. Usually it's always blue but here is all different colors. I've learned to let you cross first because I almost got hit by a car earlier today. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing you can do in a busy market is just get lost on purpose because after all the best experiences in life come from being spontaneous. Whoa look at this place. Where are we right now? <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, we're in the very backgrounds of Kandahar. So we went in some like, <laughs> some back alley here near the main market. So we're up here on the top level of the market and you can see it's made of like, truly these mud bricks. Like literally the definition of a mud brick is this. You have bricks and it's made from mud and it's super old. These walls were not made yesterday, that's all I know. <laughs> okay. A beautiful minaret up there. Much to our surprise, we found a shop, so we went inside to check it out. We made it up to the second level here, and we found this tailor shop, and this really friendly man who's got really cool posters on the wall uh, gave us some tea, and is totally letting us stay up here and get some shots of the city. Such a nice guy. Just so awesome from up here to be able to see the life happening below us. And we're really the only people up here. There's not like a second level, really. It's just, it's just us. Can I ask you about Kandahar? It's my first time here, so what do you enjoy about the city? Uh, he says, uh, Kandahar is nice. I was born here in Kandahar and raised here and I never went anywhere. I like this city, he says. Like my kids are went to school, I saw them grew here and uh, now they're having families. We're having a big family in Kandahar. 
Yeah, the only thing is that this security a little bit bothering us. We're happy with our life and belongings and everything in Kandahar. The only thing is that uh, sometimes this security type of issues bothers all the people, including so, me. What do you mean the security is wrong? What's, what's wrong with the city? Mm. Oh, he says, I, I, I always pray to God for the, for the security. Well, he says, I know the the inside the city is fine a little bit with the security but around Kandahar like like in the outskirts and far areas like villages and districts people doesn't really have a, a, a secure life out there and he says I'm also bothered when I see my fellow countrymen and friends not having a good life around Kandahar mm -hmm. so he says I hope one day the security comes and that's the only thing we're missing well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me and thank you for letting us in your shop. Oh, nice. 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 He says, uh, you're very welcome here. It's also a pleasure to me and you, you, you just came into my little shop here. It's, it's just a pleasure and uh, I, I, I pray to God to welcome any other type of people like you and it would be a pleasure to banana, always welcome banana. people yeah, like you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. What an experience that was. Wow, we stayed up here for a good half hour getting all these shots. And the guy was super friendly to let us uh, stay. No, I think we hit the jackpot on that one. Yeah. Wow. That was the coolest market I think I've ever been to in my life. Whoa, man. <laughs> it's so hard to leave that place. I could stay there all day. That cobble's different. It's just yeah. different. Like there's more people on their phones. It's more modernized. Yeah. I'm there's, not there's, you know, the shops are more modern in Kabul. Yeah. You know, here is like, if you remove the cars from the streets, you've entered the year 1835. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Exactly. It was time to visit the many famous shrines around town because Noor tells me that they're all amazing. Uh, we are here at the uh, tomb of uh, the shrine of uh, Mirwais Hotak, the emperor of the Hotak dynasty during 17th century in Kandahar. He was uh, against the Safavids of Iran who was ruling over these areas and then uh, he fought against them and he brought the freedom for this area and for Kandahar at that time. And when was this shrine made? This shrine was made uh, at the mid 17th century. And everything I'm looking at is original. Everything is original. These shrines are one of the shrines that survived during the wars and nobody has touched these areas. Uh, from the outside it was a little bit rude, but from the inside everything's okay. This place is so beautiful. It's not that often where I've seen these like, this kind of architecture, this kind of paintings, these different colors, um, all in one spot and it's, I can't believe that these are like 400 years old. It's really, really uh, beautiful to walk in here. As we were making our way onwards to the next shrine, we found out some bad news. Noor accidentally left his phone in the tuk-tuk that we were in. And I'm really hoping we're gonna get it back because this guy needs his phone. His whole business is run on his phone and how can I text you without your phone, man? It's, it's just my fault. I just forgot it in the, in the tuk -tuk. I really hope we're gonna get it back. Our driver been on the phone all day trying to call people and show the picture of our Tuk Tuk driver. So hopefully we can get it back. We will see. In any regard, we made our way to the next landmark and all our problems were gone. It's so beautiful, this marble. Incredible. Hello. Salam alaikum. <laughs> this building right behind me is the shrine of Baba Wali. Baba Wali is one of those holy men from the 40, from the 15th centuries who used to live in Kandahar. And uh, all the people believed in him as a holy man and they come to him for their problem to get solved. And even now he has lots of followers who's coming normally here on Friday. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Very interesting encounter. <sighs> that was quite interesting, those guys. Our next destination completely overwhelmed me in the best way possible. Wait until you hear about this 2300 year old settlement. So Noor, there's these massive buildings behind us that look really old. Where are we right now? 
we're at the uh, citadel of Kandahar. It's a very old one from the time of Alexander the Great. Really? But, uh, yeah, it's called, uh, in Pashto they call it the Zurshah. It means the big city. So it's a citadel. It's a citadel. Do you have any idea what year it was kind of made? Uh, Alexander the Great came to this area during the 330 BC. <sighs> um, probably it's from that time. So it was nice before, but due to years of war, and no protection and like natural uh, problems like rains and snow. This happened to the walls. And uh, they're digging underground to discover more of it. Yeah, nowadays the excavation is going on. They, wow. They're probably looking for something to find out. The excavation is going on by the Department of Information and Culture. Wow, this place definitely feels really, really old. Man. All these uh, like stone walls are the actual walls. Look at this. Look at these walls. This is some really cool stuff. Ancient citadel of Kandahar, Afghanistan. Hiking up to the top now of the Kandahar citadel. And holy shit, this place is cool. So we made it to the top of the Kandahar citadel. And it is just beautiful. You get the views over these little communities. Everything is the same shade of brown. Welcome to the old city of Kandahar, Drew. Thanks, man. Look at this. That looks like an old city. There, there's still people living in it. But the houses just look extremely old. There's one thing I feel right now. It is just ancient, historic. This place is just, just surreal to be up here right now. On our way back to the city, we came across something unexpected that was quite nerve-wracking to explore. Just out the window, we see these like little nomadic homes. They're really like tents. And Noor is telling me that these are nomads, nomadic people who, depending on the season, they move around. And uh, we're trying to get permission to see if we can... Yeah, I think he said yes. He's, he was waving at us to get permission to uh, speak with them. Do you feel comfortable to go in there? I don't know. Kind of. Do you? It's okay, Drew. We can go. Where's the driver gonna go? <laughs> I don't think he can. I don't think he's allowed to park here. We're like on the middle of the highway right now. It's okay. He can. This is Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, sure he can. Whatever you say, Noor. This life is crazy, Drew. Can what? you believe, like, moving around the country from here to another place and from another place to another place? That's crazy. Nomadic life, man. Salam alaikum. This is pretty crazy. Look at their houses here. Check this out. This is a house. Oh. Have they ever seen a tourist before? No. no Have they ever seen stuff. like anyone else come here? No, never. Never? That's quite interesting, man. First ever visitors. They were actually like kind of friendly. Yeah, they were good. The, the only thing is they were just like, suspicious, like why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? And um, usually because these people are very poor here. And uh, when like some strangers like us when they come here they expect like maybe they think it's government people or mm. they're here to help us something like that but i was like honestly trying to explain to them that we are not any organization we are not from the government right. we're just here we saw we we're saw curious you. Yeah, yeah we're curious and we just came here to just say hello to you to celebrate an amazing and safe two days in Kandahar, Noor and I headed back to the old market one final time to get our favorite juice. Probably I can find my phone here. Yeah, it's already on the market, Noor. For the record, his phone was never seen again, but that didn't stop us from enjoying the trip. We're in one of the main plazas here and we're gonna get a pomegranate juice. That big block of ice that they used to chunk it up. Whoa. So what is that? You just use that bucket to clean the straws. 
No, I don't know if I think I might get sick. He just used this water to clean like the straws. And that water is definitely it's disgusting. If I get sick, then I get sick. <laughs> oh man, that is good. When you go to the pomegranate fields and you try the thing in real life, it's so freaking tasty. Well guys, it's been an unexpectedly amazing trip here in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Until now I've been to Mazar Sharif, I've been to Kabul, I've been to the Bakh province, I've been to the Panjir mountains and this is my favorite place. Uh, it's just so surprising. I just love the fact that not many people have been here, it hasn't been exposed to the outside world and I'm really happy to be the person to come here and, and let you guys know what's really happening here. I've seen nothing but smiling faces. I can't get that amazing market out of my head. It's just such a such a cool place. Spent two days here and and easily could have been two weeks and I definitely will come back to Kandahar. And to me, Afghanistan is kind of like the climax of travel. It has the best stories that haven't been told yet and just has the purest culture and it's just an honor to be traveling here. So if you guys are still with me, if you're still watching this video, just want to say thank you so much. It's a pleasure to travel around Afghanistan and, and make stories. So um, hope you guys all have an awesome day and stay tuned for more amazing stories coming soon from the beautiful country of Afghanistan. I am one of your followers. How nice are to meet you. How are you, man? What's your name? My name is Ghulam Radza. Where are you going? I'm going to Kandahar. Me too. It's nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, man. What are you, what are you doing in Kandahar? I'm going to visit some, some of my friends. Are you? It's my first time. I'm with my friend Noor. I know. I, I, him, I know him too. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Yes, yes, yes. What's, your, what's, your huh? what's your plan? What's your plan? I'm going to visit some of friends, then uh, I will come back to Kabul to study. Study? Yeah. Are you? Cool. This yeah. is your third or fourth time in Afghanistan? Second time. Second time? Yeah. Can I take a selfie? Yeah, of course. Of course, man. Yeah, dude, nice to see you, bro. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I follow you on Facebook and Instagram. Who would have known to get recognized in the yeah. Afghanistan airport? In Afghanistan. Yeah, dude. What's your name again? Gulam Raza Ramazani. What's your name? Gulam Raza Ramazani. Gulam Raza Ramazani. Yeah. Awesome, man. Maybe we can meet in, uh, in Kandahar. Uh, you're going to Kandahar too? Yeah, I'm going there right now. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe yeah. we can meet. Of course, of course, of course. Cool, bro. It was nice meeting you too. You too, man. I'll Have see you. Nice I'll see you on the plane. Okay. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.